Yes, the increased opportunities offered by the internet do increase risk, but it is not just risk that we're involved with here in trying to enable the development of responsible citizens. It's the risk bit that tends to generate the new set of rules, the new set of do's and don'ts. The part that the media continually concentrates on, of course, are the set of rules that pupils need in order to be safe on the internet. The creation of a responsible citizen, both online and in society, goes well beyond a set of do's and don'ts which young people must learn. The school has a duty of care. Pupils must be able to use the internet safely. The short video that you are about to see shows how one teacher has gone about teaching a traditional subject from the national curriculum involving digital technologies but trusting the children from the beginning to organise themselves into groups and to agree on who is going to perform what task whilst producing their final presentations. Today, here's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be Tudor newsreaders. You are going to be reporting on the different ends that came to Henry's wives. Each table is going to be your own news company and each table is going to report what happened to that wife, why it's happened and what's going to happen next. And that's quite a lot because we now only have an hour and nine minutes left. Because she got ill of having the baby and nothing could help her. Yeah, but what did she get? No, because they didn't have medicine there. So they yeah, that's what. Look, it happened because... We have 16 minutes left to actually start recording our news broadcasts. Now, let me explain a few things about the video cameras. These cameras, as I said, have only one minute of footage on them. So you need to use that footage well. I was feeling a bit uncomfortable. Being with an old lady. Is that the end you see there? Well, I've lived in the Legion region. It's quite nice. But you uh, What do you think of Anne Boleyn? Actually, we'll get married next week. Do you, do you like what? Catherine or Anne? What do you think? <laughs> I think Henry lost his temper at the end there. Give him a clap. That's brilliant. These children seem now to have a pretty good understanding of what happened to each of Henry VIII's wives and have well researched the reasons why, at least from Henry's point of view, those wives experienced the fates that they did. We're going to be looking at four main areas of interest, each of those four interacting with the others and all of those four interacting with the one that we'll put in the centre initially as digital technology, but by the end of the programme we will come to see as digital technology supplemented by your learning platform. How often is it that we really consult with our pupils about what it is they want from their education? We saw from the list of perhaps subjective attitudes that kids have to their standard lessons, that they perceive themselves as being involved in an incredible 50% of the time in merely copying from books or from the board. We can't involve and engage pupils in personalising their learning unless we change our practice within the classroom, unless we change the model of pedagogy within the classroom. If in our schools we fail to adapt to this new model that reflects the needs of our pupils, the experience of our children and young people outside of school, we risk their becoming further disengaged from the school process. The second element that we'll look at is the new curriculum. What might this future curriculum look like? You can see here from this that there is far less prescription going on. There is a great deal of emphasis on the need for pupils' understanding in various areas to be raised. 
Towards the very centre of the diagram, you can see that there are key skills which are still in, so important to so many people, such as literacy and numeracy. But joining those skills at the centre, towards the centre of the diagram, is now that of ICT. ICT in conjunction with literacy and numeracy. At the heart of that new approach to a curriculum is the goal of creating responsible citizens, successful learners and confident individuals. The school has a duty of care. Pupils must be able to use the internet safely. But they also have to learn to use the internet and its resources and its opportunities responsibly. Actions which pupils take, which can be construed, be seen as bullying on the internet, cyberbullying as the media would have it, often have no intended pain at the end of it. They are done through a lack of consideration, a lack of understanding, a lack of awareness of the consequences of such actions. Part of a school's safeguarding programme should be to bring about an improved awareness, both in staff and pupils, of the possible consequences of ill-considered actions. Schools have a responsibility in four main areas in terms of their safeguarding activities. One, obviously, for pupils. Second, and often not considered quite so strongly, is the responsibility to staff. Thirdly, to the security of data in the school. Fourthly, and finally, towards the school itself. The fourth category that I mentioned was the school safeguarding itself. And it can't guarantee that it can safeguard itself, but it can go a long way towards achieving that by having really good, well thought out, acceptable use policies that all staff and all students, and often, in many cases, all parents of students have to sign. This ties back in to our understanding of the use the potential use of the managed learning environment. The school can do away with all forms of written communication between itself and its staff. And when the staff come in in the morning, the only way they're going to find out the agenda for the day is to log into the MLE. Or they can, and or they can provide access to parents who can then see and understand the work that their children are doing whilst they're in the school. The school, of course, can communicate all the information that it needs, including acceptable use policies, to its parents online. It is quite a risk that a school will become relatively familiar with the use of their learning platform, become relatively comfortable with its use, but let it rest at the stage of being, in a pejorative term, a digital graveyard. It merely becomes a repository a storage place for documents, which is, of course, an initial development of the learning platform's potential, but does not by any means explore its full potential.